everybody. I am live. Um, it is Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. And I'm Roz and from New World Finds, and I'm a brand ambassador with Redesign with Prima. And today we are going to um, play with purses. So I have this purse here. Actually, technically it's this way. I just painted the middle part there. So hold on. Okay, so these are genuine leather purses. And um, they're very soft. This one has uh, stuffing inside, so I can't really show you um, how flexible right now. Um, but I could show you uh, one of the others that I have here. So the middle section here is a genuine leather and the side pieces here are um, like a bonded leather. Uh, so they're still leather, just not as a high grade as a genuine leather, which is what you have in the middle here. Um, so they're super easy to uh, alter, paint, um, add transfers, add, you know, uh, stencils, you know, stenciling. You can add the decor waxes on them. You can add the chalk paste on them. I mean, pretty much you are only limited to your imagination to what you can do on them. All right, so I just want to show you one of the other ones that I had um, done previously. So I actually think I do have a little bit of stuffing in here. So let me take it out so I can show you. Okay. Yep, there we go. Okay, so this one I already painted. Um, I did post it in the group, so um, I'm sure you may have seen it already. So I did two different transfers on this one, and I painted this one with uh, paint couture paint, and I glazed with um, Van Dyke Brown and from Dixie Belle, and I sealed it with uh, Fusion Clear Wax. This one is sealed, um, but I have another that isn't. But you can see these purses are really nice and flexible. Like I'm squishing it all up into a ball here, right? So they're really nice and soft. Hi, Maria. They're nice and soft, totally flexible. They don't crack, you know, the transfer when you're scrunching it all up or anything. And you can see, you know, nothing's coming off. Nothing's coming off. I know you guys can hear that. That's my, my fingernails. I got some nails and yeah, it's on there. Now, um, preferably, um, we recommend to use the transfers um, that are the newer ones and or just newer manufacturer. Hi, Linda. Um, so you want ones really that are in a black tube um, and that have the grid lines. If they have the grid lines, you know that it's a newer transfer. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to work. We just know these ones work much better. All the ones that we've tried um, work better. So this one, like you can see here, okay, it's nice and beautiful. There's no cracking. It's molded itself beautifully to the leather. Um, this is a this was a newer manufacturer uh, transfer, but it wasn't a new transfer. But we, it's a newer manufacturer. So it's the manufacturer that you want, because this is an older the um, the black designed transfer this is an older transfer so it's hard to show you on this one let me see if I have a better example on the back here yeah okay so here you can see I gotta go to the middle there we go this transfer it it did crack it cracked a lot um, once it's on there and sealed it's okay but it did crack whereas you can see the this one didn't because this was an older an older transfer. So they, they are not as flexible 
as these ones are here. But that's okay. It's not a, you know, it's not really a big deal. And this one, I, you know, I was keeping it for myself anyway. It was a tester. So I know next time that I'm going to use a transfer that's not, you know, an older one. Because I don't want it to crack. I want it to be nice and smooth and molded to the leather. Or to the paint, painted leather. Whatever you want to call it, right? Okay. So, now that that's out of the way. If you have any questions about it, just ask and I will... I will um, answer as best I can. I have to move my chair, I'm sorry. Oof, it's uh, getting stuck on my carpet. Okay, so this side I already did because I wanted to be able to transfer um, with it, you know, already dry. Um, I'm still going to go through the steps here and I'm gonna use my hair dryer real quick to dry it so that, it, you know, I'm not smudging it or anything after but it does take two coats with a lighter color over the dark leather obviously just like you would you know with paint you would need multiple coats if I was using a different color well then that probably would have been a better choice but it's okay okay so I just have like a little sanding pad here I cut a corner off no big deal doesn't matter um this is maybe 220 grit I think it's called medium so I'm assuming it's a 220 but you could still do like one 150 or you know 120 or something like that too or 320 even if you wanted all right so I'm going to point you guys down so you can see what I'm doing all right can we see yes okay all right, so I'm just going to sand, um, scuff sand quickly my brown section of leather here in the middle, okay? So I'll do like a little spot here and you can see the difference. So you see how it's just kind of scuffed off that shine and that's what you want. All right, so I'm gonna continue. And I'm, I'm just being careful not to go over onto my kind of uh, camel color out here because I wanna keep that color. So I'll just go all the way around with my, my sandpaper. Being careful not to um, get the this camel part here. Same with when I'm going around my uh, handles here. Okay, and then get underneath. each side and then one more little spot right here okay and I think that's good you see it's a little, just a little scuffed up and then just wipe it off you can use a cloth or whatever you prefer I can just use my hand because it's not really creating a lot of dust it's just scuffing it you know what I mean Okay, so then we're just going to take our paint, which I have mixed up. Whoop, I've already mixed up a color that I want, which is um, Fusion Mineral Paint. And I did, um, I did a cross between uh, Cathedral Taupe and Casement which is like, this is a white, and the other is like a dark, creamy taupe color. So I wanted it to be just a little bit lighter, so I just mixed the two together. And then you're just going to take like a, um, I think this is just like a, a one-inch brush. These are um, Art Basics from Prima. They're the Finnebar line. 
They're great little artist brush because they've got this um, texture that you can do on the back here, um, like a flexible texture thing, which actually works, the flat side works really well to burnish your transfers. <laughs> okay, so then just, you're just going to paint your dark brown area or whatever, whatever area you were. All right, and then you're going to just squish, squish yourself up to the edge here and just kind of drag yourself along so that you're getting all the way to the bottom. Now you can tape it off, of course. If you like, you can absolutely tape it off so you get a nice clean line. Okay. And then when you get to your, like this is the, um, you know, the label or whatever. So I'm just going to paint around it. I'm, I'm not going to paint it or transfer over it or anything. So I'm just bringing my brush right up to the edge and then just feathering out. So I keep it natural, the, the same color that it was. I'm not, I'm not changing it or anything. Okay, and then you just want to get into all the little, you know, nooks and crannies of the, of the leather. Let me know if that glare is too much and I'll turn the, I'll turn that light off right there. I feel like it's obscuring, making it way too bright. Is it way too bright? You let me know. Okay, and then I'm just getting right up here to the edge of my my handles, same thing. Just feathering up and out with my brush. Again, you can tape that off as well if if you need to. That's totally fine too. And then I want to make sure that I'm filling in all of my um, my stitching. I don't want the stitching to come through looking dark. I want it to be as light as possible to blend in with the color that I'm, I'm doing. And then I just want to take my brush up to the very edge here and just run that along the side. Again, you can Tape this off if you need. But these these brushes, they're they're great at um, control. So you don't you know go flying off the side or anything like that. Okay. And then let me go over on this side. Get as much of that covered. So I do need to do two coats. So once I get this one on, I will dry it just so that I can start on the other side to show you um, how to do the transfer. Okay, and then our stitching. Fill that in, 
and then up to the side. If you go over, just wipe it off. It will come off. Okay. Getting up here and underneath your handle is the trickiest part, for sure. You guys have any questions? I can see you're all there, so I hope uh, I hope I can see your comments. I think I can because I already said hello. You're just all just watching instead. That's okay. I'm all right with that. All right, so then I'm going to lift my hold on let me switch it around so you don't just get my arm i'm going to sort of like anchor it with my hand and pull it back so that i can get my brush down into those little grooves right there between the handle and the purse itself so i'll do this side oops i got some gloopy I got it gloopy. Hold on. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to feather down into that spot. The brush is very thin. So it gets down in there good. Um, yes, Maria, it would be. Um, you want to make sure that whatever the faux leather is that you pick is soft the the softness i think is probably the the biggest game changer if it's not soft it's it's you're you're more likely to run into having cracking issues if that makes sense um because it's not as flexible like these are soft and so they they're they flex a little bit more than your average you know faux leather or whatever purse right um when i was doing this this on like doc martens or leather shoes or boots um you know you have your creases where you're walking you you know if you if you're not uh super careful you can either tape it off poly or you can just add a little bit of um uh um whatchamacallit Vaseline and then it won't stick to it um, What was I saying <laughs> Something about the leather being soft. What was that? I don't remember now. I Got sidetracked. I'm sorry. Oh When you're walking with shoes you get creases in your shoes So if they're leather you want to make sure that you're getting the paint into the um the creases so it's the same principle as this right the softer it is the more it's you know you're gonna have creases and whatnot if it's not hard I mean if it's not flexible then you may run into cracking issues I hope that made sense okay so let's just finish this little guy here so we can get to transferring this little spot right here. I want to fill up my okay let me turn it around like so. Get my edge okay Smooth out my my paint. Oops. Okay. 
So I don't get this everywhere. I'm just going to dry it real quick with my hair dryer. So it's going to be loud for just a sec. But I will do it away from the, the phone so it's not loud. Not too loud. Okay, so now you can see I'm going to need a second coat, um, but I'm not going to do that right now because I already have two coats on here. So now I can um, start transferring this. So basically I'm just showing you the steps. Um, so you're going to sand and paint and then you're going to transfer. So this is the back. Um, not that it really matters because I like to do both both sides and make them look pretty and for this one we're going to do um, the new uh, transfer uh, the new release from the new release it's the floral court and it's um, come on kick in it's hard to see it now let me bring this light down a bit if that helps. Ah, that's a bit better. There we go. So it's very dainty and pretty. So that's what we're going to do. All right, let me move the paint out of the way so I don't bump it by accident. Get my hand in it because I probably would. All right. So I need to find just the right section that's going to fit this little area here perfectly okay so i definitely want you know like one of these beautiful little things right in the middle so i think right there all right so i'm gonna have to do a little bit of cutting to make sure that I get this to fit around the handles, around the uh, zipper and all that should be interesting. Okay. So let's see again where we're going to go. This is going to be our main piece. So I'm going to follow this um, graph it, graph line here to the middle. So that's awesome sauce. Okay. And then looks like we're going to four notches over on either side, right up to there. Okay. So that's where we're going to cut. But first, we're going to fold it. Because I don't have a cutter. You can obviously use a cutter. If you have a cutter, please use a cutter. I don't have a cutter. I have my scissors. Four. And there. And I will just fold that. And that's going to be where I cut. And then one, two, three, four. Same thing on this side. Line this up. And fold. 
I'm so technical, right? Okay, so now we cut. Now we cut our line. I'm gonna have to cut it again, but I wanted to do, oops, I wanted to do um, the side ones first. This one. Okay. I'm not there. All right. So now, obviously, this is taller than what we're doing. So. I think I can just start here and chop that off. And then it would just be a little bit right here. Or it may go all the way to here. Okay. All right, well, let's cut this line here then. And then this will go down the middle and let's see, I think I'm going to go right to here. All right. So that means again to right here, just taking a, about half an inch or so off. That'll work. That will work. And I can always cut off any excess if I have, you know, a little bit. You can be really precise and measure. That's not how I roll, though. Okay, so that will go like a soul. A cute. Cutie, cutie. Okay, so now what I need to do is um, figure out how to get it around the handles. Yeah, yeah, that should be interesting. All right, so what I can do probably is, I guess I could just start no, because I need to stop there and cut too, right? For the um, the zipper, for the zipper, for the zipper, which is right there. Huh. Okay. So let's go, and then where does that go? How far do those go down? They go right there. All right. So this is what we're gonna do. And then I'll place it in as I need. I'm going to cut around here and across here where the zipper is and then back down here. And then this part here, I can place back in after the fact. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. All right, let me double check where my zipper is lining up to. I believe it is right there, right where that notch starts. Okay. Okay. All right. 
So now I have two sections. This piece here will go like this. And then after, I can then piece in this back here where I need to and fit it around the handles and the rest of the zipper. This is the easiest way. Okay, so now we're going to put this on. You have two choices. When you get your tube, you get a wood stick in the tube. Um, this works great. If um, you're not comfortable using the wood stick, you can get the redesign with Prima tool, which looks like this. And you can get this at your local retailer as well. And these are hard. And they also have these little, you know, different edges and whatnot on them that make it easier to get into hard little places and creases. And then you have your flat section that you can use as well. I prefer the stick, so I will be using the stick. I don't know why, I just do. All right. So when you're using your transfer, you just peel it back gently. Don't rip it off. Just let the paper come off on its own, like so. Don't touch the design, if you can help it. And then very carefully lay your design down. And I'm going to be lining this one up with the middle stitching. of the purse. Okay. Now the there's a little bit of a concave on the base of the um, purse. It's a little bit, you know, concaved. It's not a super straight line. So I knew that going in when I cut it, but what I'm going to do is just take my scissors now and just cut just a little sliver off the bottom there so that it's not going over onto my camel because once the transfer is on it's a little harder to get it off okay so all right there we go got my little sliver off Okay, so now I can go ahead, eh, except for it's stuck to my finger now. All right, now I can go ahead and apply it. So I left all of the stuffing in this one. Um, it's just a little bit easier to, to uh, maneuver with the stuffing in there because it gives it a little bit more firmness. Okay. And then you're just going to transfer, just like you would if you were on furniture or any other uh, surface that you're putting transfers on. Now you can also put something hard underneath here. You could put, you know, a book. You know, I have a dictionary up there. I could probably use a dictionary. That would work well. Or, you know, like a cutting board or, you know, something hard. If you got that, you know, encyclopedia kit, you know, you can also use that. I had a little extra on the outside on here, so I just wanted to make sure that was gone so it wasn't sticking to my camel color. Okay. And they stick, like, right away. I mean, they're on there. All right, and then just slowly start peeling back. If you have a section that it didn't adhere, you just go ahead and put it right back down, your, your sheet, 
and there, there's a little corner right here that didn't adhere, so I'm just going to put my plastic back down, rub on that little spot again, and there we go. I think I totally missed this whole little section right here. It's okay. <laughs> leaf there. go along your edge here just make sure that you got any little leftovers folded over or in if need be and then run along your bottom and then just take your whole hand and fingers and just rub it in rub it into that into that line down your middle you know you want it to get in there and be stuck and molded to your to your piece. There. Look at that. How pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay. So now we need to figure out how to get this on there. Or I don't have to put it on at all. I could just leave it like that. But I think it needs it. So I'm going to attempt it. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know if it will work. But we're going to try it. So, that means, technically, that this is going to become three separate pieces as well. Because what we're going to do is this one will go down the middle, which would be right here. So, I need to cut to there. I didn't need that little extra bit on top. So that will go right here. All right, so let's get that on. Okay, get our little piece. And we're gonna line up our grid line with the line on the purse, the stitching line there, or the joining line, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, smooth it out, and then start transferring with our tool. And then just pull it back, and voila! Voila! And then same thing, just rub it in, make sure that it's adhered everywhere and down the middle. There's no gaps, there's no um, bubbles, none of that. It's perfectly where it needs to be. Okay, now these guys are going to be just that much more difficult because I need to get it around... Um, that way. I'm like, why does it not feel like it's going the right way? It goes like that. Okay. So this one then goes this side. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see. It's going to be up here and then come across. So I need to come down 
going to cut down this middle spot right here. Probably about one, two, three, four, five notches down. Um, so that'll be, and then I'll do the same thing going the opposite direction on this side. And I'm hoping that that will allow it to basically get in behind this uh, handle here, like that, right? And then I'll have to cut this down to the handle, I'll cut the shape of the handle there out. Yeah? Okay, let's see if we can do that then. So it's got to be I'll try and trace it with my finger the best I can. Okay, let's see if that worked. So you can kind of see where I traced it. shall see if that worked. So that will get tucked up behind and joined again. And then that will sit right in there. And then this one will be cut here. All right. And it will be cut here. Okay. All right, so that one's gonna go there. It's like a puzzle. <laughs> it's like putting a puzzle together. Okay, so I'm going to get this just a bit bit more so I've got a little bit of give that side okay let's get this on and we'll fit that down in there ah, before it sticks okay Trying not to get it to stick on there. Before I put it in place anyway. <laughs> All right, this is a little piece, so you can pretty much just, you know, attach it with your, using your fingernails instead of a tool. Okay, so that little guy's on. Now we get to put this one in here. So I need to cut just another little notch off on this side. Let's see if that's enough. Let's see if it joins up with its counterpart, rows to rows. That looks pretty good. actually too big so it's gonna have to go like that that's okay like that all right okay let's fit this guy in there see if we can do that I haven't done this before where I've had to fit it around any of the the uh, handles or anything, so this is a uh, this is new, 
and it's really quite tricky, if I do say so. All right, let me see. Okay. And then, all right, well, that's all right. I shall just cut the top that off a little bit. There's a little bit of excess. Okay. Did that go in the purse? I think it went in there. Oh well. Oh well. All right. Okay. Let's make sure that one's on. go it was tucked up under okay all right and then just smooth it out and that wasn't an exact match because I did <laughs> well thank you Maria um, I did have to cut it so it doesn't match up exactly on that rose there but I don't really think like it's super noticeable unless I point it out. I'm, I mean, you're going to have your, your purse anyway, your, your handle up anyway. So you can't really see that there's a join there that shouldn't have been there anyway. Okay. So let me do the other side since I know kind of what I need to do now. Um, these guys are tangled up and in my way. Okay. So let me see if I can get them in here out of the way. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Tuck those in there. All right. So again, I have to do the same thing on this side, which was not easy, but we shall try it again. Uh, Let's do that again. <laughs> All right, so I think it goes like so. So I'm just tracing again the outline of that um, handle there on the bottom so I can cut. And then I will cut again down the middle and then do my notches. So let's see, how far did I need to go again? Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's pretty good there. Okay. And notch. And notch. And then chop, chop. The shape out. Okay. All right. Okay. So this one will go here. Which I think I'm going to start with the outside instead of the inside this time. So I'm just going to chop that off and that'll go on that side. So let's do this one first. I think I need to go just a little more off of this. Okay, just another little smidgen. That just brings it down further for me so that it lines up with the top and the sides correctly. Okay. All right, so let's get that attached. Can 
you see it? I think so. So this bag is a little more dainty, I think, and delicate than um, the others that I've done so far. But I like it. I really wasn't sure about this transfer, but I, I kind of like it. It definitely does remind me of my grandma, but that's a good thing. Because my grandma was awesome. Alright. Okay. And then this one will go here. And I need to cut to fit the um, zipper area there. So I'm going to cut there and here. So I've got one little piece here i got to use. And that will go this tiny little piece because, 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 we'll go right here because it would look unfinished if I didn't add it back. There we go. Tiny little piece just makes that big difference. Okay, now this guy should fit up here. Should being the key word. Should fit the right to here. Okay. And again, I'm just using my fingernails to attach it. It's because it's a small piece and it's in an awkward spot. There we go. Okay, and again, just rub with your fingers and make sure it's in. Look how pretty. It looks like, um, uh, what do you call that, um, that thicker fabric? Uh, I really wish my brain would work for me sometimes. Um, tapestry? Is that what I'm thinking? Is that the word I'm thinking? I don't know. Anywho. So that was that. But again, you can see. Not coming off. It's on there. Pretty. Yeah, like a Waverly fabric, yeah, but it, it that thicker, there's a thicker, um, it's not tapestry, it's like an older, older fabric that you usually find on like antique chairs and stuff. I don't know. Anywho, <laughs> so <laughs> that's that. <laughs> yes, so now um, I will, which I can do right now just to show you real quick. Um, the Fusion Clear Wax, uh, it's like a, can we not have the glare? Like, can we not have the glare? No glare. Come on. There we go. Yeah, like an upholstery fabric. So this is like just really soft um, wax. All right. And I'll take um, like a, a paper towel. Or you can use, you know, a cloth or whatever, whatever you, you choose to use. And I'm just going to get like a little bit. And I'm just going to start. Literally what I'm going to do is just massage it in. You know, because you're using a, um, you're using over leather. Right? So you're wanting to get penetration into the leather into the paint you want it to get down in there right so i'm literally 
I'm massaging it in there. And I'm not going to use a lot. That little bit will cover the whole area. And I would do the same thing for um, if I was using the the like the wise owl salve, which also works really well. So you can see there's a little bit of brown. I'll try and get it without the glare again. Come on now. There's a little bit of brown on the end there, on the on where I have it. That's the leather color coming through. So you know that I'm getting down into the leather. Still nice and smooth. There isn't a lot left over. It's not sticky. It's a fabulous wax. And it's going to seal it. It's going to, you know, it's penetrated. So there's no, you know, I could put water on it and it would be fine. It would just drip right off. Which I will also show you because I got water. Okay. There we go. Drip, drip, drip. And it just beads up. Can you see it? It just beads right up. There it is, there it is. And then, whoop. here we go, ready? Gone. Gone. Yeah, Dixie Belle Clear Wax did not work. Um, so, like, Okay, I, I don't I don't know the difference in how to explain it because I'm not like a huge I'm not a huge um wax user to begin with. Um and it was a totally trial and error thing when I was painting the Doc Martens to uh see which wax would work the best or which top coat would work the best. And um when I did the uh the Dixie Bell it it would literally gum up like this. If I did this, like if I rubbed on it, it would literally gum up like it was like like gum. It was so awful and and so definitely I know the fusion uh clear wax works amazing. Hands down. Can't deny it. Proof. All right, so um, I do know that uh, we have some ladies who are testing the uh, Dixie Bell spray wax. So I hope that um, I hope that that turns into a great alternative for the Dixie Bell ladies to know, um, because I know that you know you obviously you want to be able to use your own your own products. Um, for sure, if, especially if you're a retailer. So, um, it'd be great if it did work. Um, but for now, you know, this is just a little, you know, container. You don't need a lot. You know, you're not, you know, out thousands of dollars or something, you know, with a different brand of wax, you know. Um, but on the, on the same token, you technically don't have to seal um, because like Fusion has a built-in top coat and also I believe Dixie Bell does too. Um, so technically you don't have to. I like to seal with the wax just because I want it to be, uh, waterproof, you know, and I want it to get into the, the, down into the leather and into the paint to keep it nice and, and flexible, right? And soft. And that's the only way that it's going to stay that way. All right, guys. So that's, uh, that's what we did today. And I think it's kind of cute. And if I remember what that word is, I'll put it in the comments. Because <laughs> I forget stuff a lot. All right, guys. 
thanks for hanging out with me. I'll uh, I'll see you next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern. If not, you can come over to my page, New Old Finds, and I go live on Friday nights at uh, 9 o'clock p.m. All right. Bye.